All right, so in my last video, I started talking about valence bond theory, which basically treats a chemical bond as an overlap of orbitals. And uh, the better the overlap, the stronger the bond, and the lower energy overall of the electrons that reside in those orbitals. And uh, we saw in the last video that uh, if we apply the simplest treatment of valence bond theory, which is uh, overlapping of uh, standard atomic orbitals, um, standard atomic orbitals, what do I mean by that? Well, I'm just talking about the S, P, D, and F orbitals, so those standard atomic orbitals. If we consider uh, chemical bonds as uh, overlaps of these standard AOs, then uh, sometimes uh, that is a good treatment. So in the case of a molecule like hydrogen sulfide, um, H2S, if we consider uh, each uh, sulfur-hydrogen bond as a, uh, an overlap of a hydrogen 1s orbital and a sulfur 3p orbital, uh, by the way, I made a mistake uh, in the last video. When I was demonstrating this, uh, I labeled the uh, sulfur valence atomic orbitals as 2s and 2p, and they are actually 3s and 3p. So that didn't that mistake didn't ruin the entire video, but nevertheless, it was uh, it was incorrect information. So I just wanted to to uh, rectify that. So if we consider each hydrogen sulfur bond as an overlap between a 1s and a 3p, uh, then we would end up with a molecule in which uh, the bond angle between the two hydrogens uh, is about 90 degrees, the distance between two p orbitals. So we'd have uh, two hydrogens 90 degrees apart, and we'd have a lone pair sitting in a 3p orbital and a lone pair sitting in a 3s orbital on sulfur. And for hydrogen sulfide, that turns out to be a good treatment because the actual bond angle, according to experimental evidence, is pretty close to 90 degrees. It's about 92 degrees. But in this video, I'd like to demonstrate uh, that the simple overlap of uh, standard atomic orbitals uh, treatment isn't always the best treatment. In fact, in many cases, it's, it's not a good treatment at all. So uh, I'd like you to consider uh, the bonding of a compound that is composed only of carbon and hydrogen. So if we apply an overlap, uh, a standard atomic orbital overlap treatment to a compound that is composed of carbon and hydrogen, well, what, what, will, uh, what can we predict uh, the bonding situation to be? So a good place to start would be to look at the uh, electron configurations, the ground state electron configurations of both carbon and hydrogen. So carbon has the ground state electron configuration 2s2, 2p2. Hydrogen, uh, obviously, is just 1s1. So we have two half-filled 2p orbitals on carbon and we have one half-filled 1s orbital on hydrogen. So uh, I guess you know maybe the idea is two hydrogens can come in and, uh, and two half-filled uh, 1s orbitals from hydrogen can come in and overlap with each of the two uh, 2p orbitals on carbon. And that would, uh, that would result in a, uh, in a compound that has the formula CH2, and it would also result in a, uh, in a bond angle uh, of about 90 degrees. Again, that's just the distance between two p orbitals. And uh, experimental uh, experimental evidence actually has shown that this is uh, this is clearly not the case. The uh, the actual formula of a compound of you know the compound that consists of just carbon and hydrogen is actually CH4. So the uh, hydrogen to carbon ratio is not two; it's actually four. And furthermore, uh, the bond angle is 109.5 degrees, not 90 degrees. That's a huge uh, discrepancy. So the uh, standard atomic orbital overlap treatment worked for hydrogen sulfide, but it, but it doesn't seem to work with a compound that is composed of uh, carbon and hydrogen. So what is, what is the explanation? What's going on? The answer is hybridization. So what hybridization is, is it is a combination of standard atomic orbitals to form these orbitals called hybrid orbitals. Now, although the uh, hybrid orbitals are, are, are still uh, localized on individual atoms, just as standard atomic orbitals are, they have, uh, they have different sizes, uh, well, excuse me, they have different shapes and uh, different energies altogether than standard atomic orbitals. So uh, if we examine just you know some of the uh, some of the shapes, excuse me, yeah, some of the shapes of some of the orbitals, uh, let's see. Let's uh, suppose I have 
a 1s orbital or just an s orbital and suppose I have a p, uh, just a p orbital and then suppose I have a hybrid orbital well uh, the s orbital remember that's just a spherical orbital I mean that's not a perfect sphere but you get the idea it's a spherical orbital and if this was a that that uh, the one s is spherical if it's a two s and beyond then it's like a spherical shell so that's basically what the uh, s orbitals look like uh, the p orbitals those are dumbbell shaped so i usually draw them like this doesn't quite look like a dumbbell shape but it does emphasize the fact that there is a region of uh, no electron density uh, right there at the nucleus. Uh, hybrid orbitals, um, well, what, what do S and P orbitals have in common? Um, they, are both, they are both symmetrical about the nucleus. Hybrid orbitals actually are asymmetric about the nucleus. So a hybrid orbital looks something like this. So a hybrid orbital uh, generally has uh, one lobe that is a lot bigger uh, than the other. It has the, there's a lot more electron density concentrated in one lobe than the other. And uh, the reason why this happens is because, uh, remember, uh, one of the fundamental uh, things behind uh, valence bond theory is that, is that uh, there's a, a, a strong bond corresponds with a good overlap. So if if you can, uh, if the idea is if, if the orbital can have a bigger, you know, if one of its lobes can be bigger, uh, it can it can allow for uh, a greater overlap among other orbitals, and uh, thus um, a lower energy overall. So uh, hybrid orbitals, uh, remember, yeah, they're 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 a combination of standard atomic orbitals, so they're mathematical combinations. So in the case of uh, a, a molecule that is composed of carbon and hydrogen. Um, the hybrid orbitals actually turn out to be a better uh, description overall and they agree uh, more with the experimental evidence than just the uh, simple uh, overlap of standard atomic orbitals. So we're going to get into uh, the different types of hybridization and how to determine hybridization and stuff like that uh, in the next couple of videos. I, I, already have, I already do have a video on that but um, that was back when I shot with my old uh, LG Xenon phone so the video quality is terrible on that video so um, all that uh, new material is going to be on the way and um, alright good luck